When we hear the word social media, we think of Facebook and Twitter, WhatsApp and Instagram, but these are just platforms. Social media is the vast amount of content we have produced and its consequences for our lives. Yes, memes and selfies, but also tools for making and breaking relationships. A means for creating equality or reinforcing inequality. A ubiquitous feature of our lives today. Consider the claims that are being made. Social media is set to trivialize relationships or life itself, limit our attention span, become the only way to sell anything, and to be a sort of a big brother that knows all our intimate details. But who are we actually talking about? Are these claims equally true for a factory worker in China and an IT professional in India? To answer these questions, nine anthropologists spent 15 months each in places such as one of these new factory towns in China, a huge IT complex inserted between villages in India, and a politically volatile town on the Syrian-Turkish border. Xinyuan Wang, who studied the use of social media amongst factory workers in China, documented her experiences of fieldwork in painting. I actually found there were two migrations, one from rural villages to the factories, and simultaneously another from offline to online. My colleague studied a traditional rural site in North China, and partly due to a greater concern for education, he actually found very different uses of and attitudes towards social media. In Italy and Trinidad, we learned what it means when human communication becomes more visual. From Brazil and Chile, we explored social media's impact on online equality and offline inequality. In my field site in South India, as well as in our site in the Syrian-Turkish border, we found that public social media can sometimes be more conservative than offline life. While private messaging, as in WhatsApp, give unprecedented possibilities for contact between young men and women. We also created a new definition of social media, which we call scalable sociality. This focuses on the varying degrees of privacy and size of groups, as here amongst English schoolchildren. The Why We Post project will launch on the 29th of February 2016. Our website contains over 100 films made during fieldwork and many stories. It will discuss our 15 main findings and provide a handbook for learning. Also from the 29th of February, you can take our free five-week e-learning course, the first FutureLearn course created at University College London. You can register for this course at futurelearn.com. Our website, e-learning course and films are all available in eight languages. Turkish, Italian, Portuguese, Spanish, English, Hindi, Tamil and Chinese. We will also publish 11 volumes as free open access books with University College London Press, including the comparative book, How the World Changed Social Media. We need to understand the consequences of social media for people all around the world. So if you want to help us turn this global research into global education for free, then spread the word. Image. Meme. Post.